Okay, hold on. Let me let me just see if I can work this correctly here. Yes, I've got it. Um, this gentleman now to close us close off the evening uh, is a digital marketing consultant, but more important than that, he's Ventura County's first professional comedian. Please welcome Jeff Urea. You're gonna need to use that. Okay. Thank you. Mate. Oops. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I'll, I'll, I'll Thank you so much. Okay. Hey everyone. Hi. Uh, it's, it's actually, I gotta tell you, it's a big relief to be able to talk to people, uh, to be able to talk in front of people and not have to be funny, you know. It really, it really is, because when you have to be funny, you know, you have to be funny, and you have people's attention spans for about 30 seconds, so I get to bore you guys today. I'm really excited about that. So my name is Jeff Urea. I'm actually the former manager of the Ventura Harper Comedy Club. Has anyone ever seen me perform comedy? See, they got... Three people. Okay, cool. I need to see. I need to start networking more. <laughs> um, I I left uh, I left the the comedy club last year, and I now work for YP Marketing Solutions. YP is the rebranded Yellow Pages. You know, remember the old book that you that you guys used to use as, as a doorstopper? <laughs> I work for that company now, and now we're, we still sell the book, but now we do digital marketing. So we we, we uh, transferred everything to online, and that's how we help businesses uh, get found and, and drive leads. Uh, but enough about the boring stuff. I'm to talk about me real quick. Uh, so today I, I'm going to talk about how networking changed my life, which it really, it really did, guys. Um, let's go. So a little bit about me. Uh, I was born and raised in Fillmore. Anyone from Fillmore here tonight? I got no right home. All right. Uh, I'm UCSB alumni. I'm the first generation in my family goes to, to go straight to a four-year college. I'm one of the only people from my entire class, uh, my, my entire graduating class in high school, to go straight to a four-year college. And uh, I, I think, thank you, thank you. Uh, turns out beer pong's not an actual sport though, so. <laughs> uh, um, Ventura County's first professional comedian, marketing consultant for YP. Uh, I am the newly appointed communications chairman of the Ventura County Democratic Party, and I'm going to be a future delegate for the party in Thousand Oaks. Um, and this might not be impressive to you guys, but if you knew me, uh, three or four years ago, you'd be like, wow, this guy really changed. Um, so today I'm going to talk about how networking changed my life, using humor, making friends, and becoming an asset. Uh, so this this used to be me. Uh, and you know, the, my dad always told me uh, all, all the time, he goes, you tell me who you hang out with, and I'll tell you who you are. Which is very true. I found out the hard way that's, that, that's true. Right? Like, this is me after I got in a fight. And Isla Vista, right by like five guys like jumped me, and I had a buddy there who didn't do anything. It's like, all right, well, stop hanging out with him. Uh, this is me and some porn star. I have no idea. I don't remember this picture being taken. And this is me and my cousin Reggie in in Vegas partying it up. Now, how do I go? How did I go from this guy to the communications chairman of the Ventura County Democratic Party? It's not because the, the party lowered the standards. Trust me, don't, don't, don't believe what you, you hear in the news. Uh, what happened is I changed, so my networking changed. My network changed. Or is it the other way around? Did my network change, so I changed? You know, it's kind of the old question, what came first, right? So there's me and Mr. Sean McCarthy. Uh, this is me and Nancy Pelosi and me and Hannah Beth Jackson uh, just a couple weeks ago at the California Democratic uh, Convention. Uh, needless to say, me and Nancy, we hooked up. A week later, I was feeling the burn, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> but how, so how do I go, <laughs> how do I go from this guy, right, to rubbing shoulders with these people, right? I was at the convention, I was from here to that wall to Vice President Biden, right? I'm taking, I'm like, yeah, I'm taking pictures, and he looks me right in the eye, like, oh, Mr. Vice President, stop, you know? Like, I was, how did I go for, for, from that guy to this guy, right? And th this is what happened. This is my first networking group. I, I joined AA. I am, uh, I, my name is, first of all, I should probably introduce myself. My name is Jeff, and I am an alcoholic. And I am a proud member of Alcoholics Anonymous. And if you think about it, Alcoholics Anonymous is one of the oldest and largest networking groups in the world, in the country. Right? And how does it work? How does, it, how does AA work? It works by you networking with your fellow man. And it, it, it's not, they, they found the only way that people stay sober is by helping other people stay sober. That's, that's what it's about, 
right? So I, I joined AA, uh, not core ordered, you know, which is, but in a, it, it, you know, it was about to be core ordered, but not core ordered. And I, I'm proud to say that this month I uh, marks two years of sobriety for me. And thank you. I'm really boring now, but I'm very happy. And and the reason why I'm sober isn't because I went to rehab. Like people in AA, we joke around about those Malibu passages commercials, right? Like I used to be an addict, but now I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you never stop being an addict. And the only thing that really works that we've found is helping each other. Not, I need people to help me get sober, is I need to help other people get sober. You that, you gotta give it away. You gotta give it away, right? And, you know, I, you know, I, I have, I found my higher power. I was born and raised Catholic, and, so, and there's plenty of people in the, in the a program that, you know, they, they don't have their own higher power, but they, they work around it. And, you know, some people have debated, it's, you know, it's kind of cultish and it's not. For me, there's something that's very powerful about a group of people that meet to better themselves, like what you're all doing here today. There's something powerful about this, right? So I got sober, which is, you know, a big, a big deal for me, you know, because the way my life was heading, you know, I had TDUIs, I have an arrest record, I was, you know, bad relationships, you know, uh, but I could dance, fantastic. Uh, <laughs> so I got, I got sober, and this is how I network now. Um, I joined B and I with Mr. Sean McCarthy. I'm going to join the Ventura Chamber of Commerce. I, I go to the, to the Latino Business Expo, and I started my own networking group called Funny Business, right? And we're, we're, we'll go into that in just a second. And I, I guess give a really big shout out to Sean McCarthy and Adam Casillas who spoke earlier. These guys are some of the top networkers I've ever met in my entire life. And not only have they helped me grow as a person, I can I can uh, sincerely call them friends, which is priceless to me. Um, so how networking changed my life. So two years of sobriety, right? I quadrupled my income, which, you know, being a comedian, one of the reasons why I got out of managing a club is I want, I want to make money, obviously, right? And I, I got the job with, with YP Marketing Solutions, and I have full benefits now, and I have a good base salary, and I'm on track this year to make over six figures for my first time in my entire life. Right? That wouldn't have been possible if, if I hadn't gotten started networking, if I hadn't gotten clean and sober. Right? I'm getting married this year, too, which is definitely a big accomplishment for me. Um, and I didn't meet her at a networking group, per se, but I got my, my stuff together and my, um, my priorities shifted as well. And my fiance, she's been very supportive with all my endeavors, right? And she comes out to these networking events with me. She's a little shy, so I'm still trying to work with her, right? Um, and this year so far in 2016, I made over $20,000 in sales, which is not bad since it's not even the end of March yet, right? And most importantly, though, I made priceless friendships. That's something that you can't, can't put a price tag on, you know? So, how, um, so that, speaking of making friends, right? Using humor and making friends. I, I, uh, I really like Jeffrey uh, Gittemir, and I, I read uh, his networking book and his sales Bible. And this one really, this quote really stuck out to me. If you make a sale, you earn a commission. If you make a friend, you can earn a fortune, which is very true, right? And I think the most important part about networking is about giving back and not focusing, what is this person going to do for me, right? I like to focus now on what can I do for this person? and not expect anything back. You know, I, I'm a full, I'm a firm believer in karma. You know, you get, you get uh, what you give. You know, trying to mention giver's gain, it's, it's the same concept. You get what you give, right? Uh, so here's a couple of tips I have for you guys. One is to become an asset, right? Everyone needs a guy or a gal, right? You, we all have those friends like, I, I got a guy, right? Who, who here is that guy? Is anyone that guy? Yeah, I see Adam's that guy. Brian's that guy, right? And if you're not that guy, find out who, who is that guy, right? And this is why we're all, I think that's why half of us are here, because we know Adam can see us, because he's that guy, right? Uh, pay it forward, give her gain, take her lose. That's what Sean had mentioned earlier, early before. Mostly, don't be a pain in the ass, which is, you know, 
a very important key. I think a key to any friendship, really. Um, it's one thing when you offer help to someone, right? But that that uh, that friendship and that kindness can only go so far. And I'll get to, I'll get into that in just in, just a minute. Uh, contribute to your, your community. Um, so I am a big animal advocate. If you ever see my stand up, I talk about the differences between. Uh, dogs and cats and I hosted a pet adoption at the Ventura Harbor back in November and I'm hosting another one now uh, at, the, at the end of next month on April 23rd at the Ventura Harbor lawn and I teamed up with the Humane Society of Ventura County, uh, Ventura County Animal Services and the Santa Paula Animal Rescue Center. Now as much as I love dogs and cats and who doesn't like kitties and puppies, right? It's, 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 this, is, this to me is very rewarding for me. And now I'm becoming known as a guy. Oh, hey, I'm I'm the guy. I'm that guy. Hey, I want a pet. I want a dog or a cat. I'm gonna call Jeff. I'm gonna look him up, right? I I uh, or um people, you know, when it comes to animals, people are very quickly to help, right? Which is unfortunate about us. It says a lot about us as as a species, right? Because when you see a homeless person, you're like, uh, right? But we see a homeless person with a dog, you're like, oh. I hope the dog's okay. I hope the dog's not hungry, <laughs> right? But this is something that I was passionate about and something that I, I've, I've uh, been helping, uh, been working on, and, it's, and the next uh, adoption event is going to be the biggest event I've ever run. I, I've been doing comedy for nine years. I've performed in front of thousands of people, but this is gonna be the biggest event I've ever done because people are, I, I created a buzz and I created a, di a dialogue about it. Um, Let's go in here. And of course, being a comedian, uh, I have my show called the Jeff Comedy Jam. That's my brand, you know. And as, and as as Adam said earlier, to have your own brand is very important. I've been the Jeff Comedy Jam took me a long time to figure it out, but uh, I get a lot of responses for that too. I, I was a kid. I was about eight years old watching HBO when I was wasn't supposed to be watching HBO. Right, my parents were out, and uh, Def Def Comedy Jam came on, right. And I was like, I'm gonna have my own show one day. We call it the Jeff Comedy Jam, right? Well, I now have that show. And not only have I performed uh, this show all across California, I'm actually a regular now at the Comedy Store in Hollywood. You know, where I, I get to, I have my own show there. And it feels, it feels like pretty cool, like, you know, like, like your dad giving you the keys to the car. Like, all right, this is cool. I get to rub shoulders with people who I respect, and people who are at the top of my industry, right? Um, and so now, I, you know, I, I, make a, I make a good living doing marketing consulting, right? And so now I don't have to worry about making money doing comedy, which isn't that much money, folks. You know, figure, figure this. If I were to make $1,000 every week, which is a lot, just doing comedy, well, that's only $52,000 a year, which is, which is not a bad income. But that, that takes a tremendous amount of work, right? So now I work during the day. I hustle, right? I go to three or four networking events sometimes a day, right? And so now I get to do what I love, what I'm passionate about, and I get to help people doing it. So I use my shows now to raise money for nonprofits, to raise money for Toys for Tots, for Spark. Uh, last two months, I've raised over $1,400 for the Santa Paula Animal Rescue Center, not to mention boxes full of blankets, towels, detergent, that, that kind of stuff. Um, to me, being an asset, you know, it, it, it's going to go much farther for you in, in, in your life, in your career. N not just for business, right? Because if you, if you become known as that guy or, hey, I, I know, you know, Jeff's just got to talk to you about a comedy show or, or pets or, you know, adopting or fundraising or volunteering, I'm the guy to talk to. And, th and that's helped me. And that's, and that's turning into sales for me, which is fortunate. And then I don't do this stuff expecting sales or, or um, referrals, I do it because I'm a good person. I want to help people. That's, that, that, that was originally my entire goal of becoming a comedian. I, I, started, I first started uh, studying psychology at, UC, at UCSB. I wanted to address uh, drug addiction. I come from a family of addicts. You know? And then I realized by entertaining people, I can help them. Because right? when you're at a show or you're at the theater, or a movie, you're there for two hours, you're not thinking about your bills, or your boss, or the problems you have. You're there, you're having a good time, 
you're laughing. Laughter is good for the soul and for your body. And I, re I realized I can help people by making them laugh. And I can reach mass audiences at a time. Even if it's only for two hours, right? I'm still helping those people for two hours. Forget about the problems, right? Um, let me see uh, here. Oh, so the reason why I had the picture of the tree earlier, uh, I, I like to think of networking as like growing a tree. You know, the more roots you have, the stronger you flourish. And every time I add someone to my network, it's another branch, it's another root. You know, and you'd be surprised how, how, how strong I feel now because my network is so strong. And, and, and you feel good about it. Um, that's pretty much all I have for the slideshow. But I could, uh, is there, first of all, are there any questions so far? Anyone have any questions for me? No, I, I was actually one of the first, uh, I think one of the first 10,000 people to actually join Facebook. This is back in 2003 when you, had to, when you uh, had to have a college ID. And I was going to UCSB at the time. We were one of the first colleges to get it, right? So I've been doing Facebook advertising for a long time. And I want to give you guys a couple of tips real quick. One, don't tag people in a post without their approval first. It happens to me all the time. You know, Adam has, what, 6,000, something like that? 5,000. 5,000. Yeah, I have, I have about 3,000, right? And now I just assume that whenever a hawker wants to friend me, it's a robot, so I just delete it, right? But it happens, it happens. I get, you know, so I have a large network, and people tag me for Arbonne or for another show that I'm not involved in, and it gets very frustrating. I think it's very, it's, it's, it's disrespectful and rude. I think it's the same, uh, tagging someone without their permission is the same as fl uh, flowering outside of business that's your competitor, right? That's, it's, it's the same concept. Right. Um, also, I have a, a strong following because I keep it positive. I keep it upbeat. Right. Let me tell you something. I am I am a Democrat, but I, some of my best friends are conservative conservative Republicans. We, we respect each other's businesses, and we respect each other's opinions. Right. And if you're a business owner, and if you're posting, you know pro-Trump and anti-immigrant, this and that, you're gonna lose people, you know? And it's not, I'm not saying that your opinions are wrong. I'm saying that as a business owner, you do have a responsibility to you and your business to, rep to represent yourself. And if you do, if, and if you're posting negative stuff, complaining and stuff, people see that, they, they recognize that, you know? Um, Sir, you? I'm 30 years old, 30 years old, no kids yet, and I'm Mexican, which is like, you know, <laughs> Unheard of, right? But I'm getting married, and I and at <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, you know I, I'm 30 years old. But if you look at the people who I hang out with, my my network, you know, Adam. First of all, Adam and Sean, they're old as hell, right? So, but but they're the youngest spirit, right? But these guys are old, right? But they're, they're some of my really good friends. So I, <laughs> yeah. And, and that's part of, uh, you know, part of, of doing what I want to do. It's hard because when you're a young comic, you know, people don't really take you seriously, right? And because there's, there's, what really matters isn't your age in comedy. It matters how long you've been doing comedy for. Because you'll get guys who are in their late 40s. Oh, I'm a comedian, right? They've performed maybe once or twice at open mic. I'm a comedian. I deserve this spot. And that's like, no, it's just because it's how long you have to pay your dues. First. And Adam, you have a question? Yeah, first, uh, first question. Uh, if somebody tags you in, in my settings, I have to allow it. Yeah, you can. You, I brought security uh, in your uh, securities or settings. You can put, actually, I was going through it with Richard because we Facebook was doing some weird mm -hmm. shit yesterday. And, uh, excuse my language, but uh, it was <laughs> kind of difficult for me to do what I wanted to do. But I checked my security settings, and, you know, when people tag me, it goes to my timeline for approval. Mm hmm. So, so the reason why, and, and, you, and you can do that, and you can do that, and the thing, the thing is, you know, I just don't want to have to go through it and improve it every single, single time. And, and here's, here's another thing. So one of the, um, so it's one thing to, to get a sell, right? But I'm an honest salesman, which is why I'm not at my quota, <laughs> you know? And anyone can create a Facebook campaign. Anyone can create a, a Google AdWords campaign. Right to get leads to to promote your business, but what happens after that that money spent, right? What happens? Because I, I advertise on Facebook 
every single week. I, I spend an average of $100 a week, which, you know, at, after the year, that's what, like, what, $5,200, right? Um, and what's really frustrating is what works one day sometimes won't work the next. And what Facebook counts as an impression is very, is very frustrating because people now, it's mostly mobile, right? So they're not, not scrolling down like they used to on their mouse, seeing each post. No, they're, they're on their phone or the tablet, and they're, they're swiping, and they're swiping, and they're swiping, right? And same thing for Google AdWords. You, Google AdWords will eat up your budget without you even knowing it, right? Now, after you're done to say eats up your budget, who's held accountable? Are you, can you call Google or Facebook? Say, like, hey, why did you guys eat <laughs> Why doesn't this work this time and it worked last? No, no one's held accountable, which is very frustrating, right? And that's where, I, and, and that's a big pitching point for me for selling YP marketing solutions because we are held accountable. You know, I, I'm I'm the face and the person that sold you, you know, your your campaign. If I told you, hey, I'm gonna get you 20 calls in in April, and I don't, I don't deliver, guess who's held accountable? It's me, right? So that's one of the reasons why Google actually suggest people to advertise with YP. We're actually Google's largest partner in the country. We are the largest buyer of Google than any other country, uh, any, any, any other uh, business, I mean. Um, another tip I would give, definitely want to give you guys too, um, I didn't really explain it that well, but being funny is something that comes naturally to me and doesn't mean if you're not funny naturally, you can't be you can work on it. Right, but being funny, delivering a joke when you need be, it's gonna get you so far in business, and and, and it's gotten me. Because here's the thing, twenty thousand dollars in sales, that wasn't, I wasn't selling YP, I stopped selling YP. In fact, last year, I I I hardly had any sales, right, because I was focusing on selling the product. Well, I stopped selling the product. I started selling me, what I can do. You know, I, I think outside the box. That's why my, my boss likes me, right? I think outside the box. And I, I, I figure out ways I can help someone, not just with YP, but I'll give them a referral, give them a shout out on Facebook, right? And I stopped focusing on selling the product because it's like, oh, man, you know, some, the product's too expensive or, or, or people don't like it or this and that. It doesn't matter. Stop selling the product. Sell yourself. And if you're likable and you're funny, selling yourself is going to be a lot easier. And if you're not funny, well, hopefully you're good looking. <laughs> that's why when you see, like that's why I'm hilarious. <laughs> right? Like when you see, when you see people, and generally comics, you know, we're like, you know, we're, we're a little humble, right? But if you ever see some gorgeous guy, you're like, that guy's that funny. You can't have it all. <laughs> one, one or the other, right? Women, you're beautiful. You don't have to be funny. Why do you think men, there's more men comics? We want to be funny to get the women. <laughs> it, when's the last time you saw a hilarious, funny, beautiful female? It's been a while for me. All I got to say, guys, is Ellen is hilarious, all right? <laughs> Wanda Sykes, hilarious, right? Kim Kardashian, not funny at all. <laughs> any any other questions at all? <laughs> okay, I think we're done. Uh, oh, also, um, if anyone would like to participate in my pet adoption, it's called 805 Saves Lives. It's on April 23rd at the Ventura Harbor Lawn. I have some flyers back there. And if anyone would like to talk about digital marketing as well, too, I'll be in the back talking afterwards. Sir, did you have one more question? Yes, you may, sir. Yes, you may. And I always carry my business cards around with me now because of Sean on my card. Now, I need to think of a new card that's going to say, you know, represent what I do. You know, I can't, I can't use floss. I can't, you know, at least something. I want to think of something. Uh, but I want to say, first of all, a big thank you to Richard, guys. Can you give it up for, for, for Richard for putting this all on? And thank you for bearing with me. And I hope to see you at one of my shows sometimes. So once again, my name is Jeff Uria. Thank you all for being here.